Hello friends, this video on NEET genetics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 14. A male human is heterozygous for autosomal genes A and B and is also homozygous for hemophilic gene H. What proportion of his sperms will be ABH? Okay, so in this case, let us try to first find out the genotype of this human male. So what would be the genotype? So it has auto, so there are three genes which are involved, A, B and H. So out of which we know that A and B are autosomal genes. That means they have nothing to do with the sex chromosomes, right? And it is also told that for A and B, the, hum, the male is heterozygous. That means for heterozygous means you have one dominant allele and one recessive allele. So for the autosomal gene A, the genotype will be capital A small a because it is heterozygous. Similarly, for the autosomal gene B, the genotype would be capital B small b because that is again heterozygous. And then you have the hemophilic gene which is X-linked. That means it is not autosomal gene. It is a part of the sex chromosomes. So this hemophilic gene which is H, that is homozygous. So homozygous means you actually have both of them the same thing. So it is basically XH. So here it is talking about your sex chromosomes. Now this is also a human male. So males will not have XX. Males will have XY. So in this case he will have XHY. So it is homozygous for human males means because in males you have only one X chromosome. So if that X chromosome itself is hemophilic, that means overall the human male has homozygous hemophilic because there is no corresponding X chromosome. Only one X chromosome and that itself is hemophilic. So this is how the genotype of this person would be. Now we have to find out what proportion of his sperms would be ABH. So what are the kind of gametes that will be produced out of it? So let us try to look at the type of gametes that would be produced. Now before that we have learned about a formula right that is the possible number of gametes that can be produced out of a genotype is given by 2 to the power n where n is the number of heterozygous pair. So how many heterozygous pair do you have in this case? So you have three heterozygous pair because this is heterozygous, this is heterozygous, this is also heterozygous because for x you do not have another x you have a y. Right? So you basically have three heterozygous pair, that means 2 to the power 3 which is 8. So you must have 8 possible gametes produced from this genotype. Now let us see what are the 8 possible gametes. So let us just have a look at all the possible gametes that can be produced out of it. So one possibility, now each gamete should have one of these, like each gamete should have A, B and X or Y, one of these. So first possibility could be capital A, capital B, X, H. The second possibility could be capital A, capital B, capital Y. Third possibility could be capital A, small b, X, H. Fourth possibility, capital A, small b, Y. Fifth possibility would be small a, capital B, X, H. Sixth possibility, small a, capital B, Y. Seventh possibility, small a, small b, X, H and small a, small b, Y. So these are the possible gametes that would be produced from this genotype. Now we have to find out what proportion of the sperm. So sperms are basically the male gametes. So what proportion of the male gametes would be A, B, H. Now what is A, B, H? A, B, H is basically A, B, X, H. So they mean the same thing. So you see what, how, what part of these many sperms is A, B, X, H. So ABXH is basically 1, 1 ABXH out of how many? Out of a total of 8. So 1 eighth of the sperms would be ABH or ABXH. So therefore A is the right option. Question number 15. Down syndrome is caused by an extra copy of chromosome 21. What percentage of offsprings produced by an affected mother and a normal father would be affected by this disorder? 
So even before we start solving this, let us first uh, quickly recap that Down syndrome is a chromosomal disorder. So it is not a Mendelian disorder. It is a chromosomal disorder which happens due to an extra copy of chromosome that is on number 21. So therefore, Down syndrome is neither dominant or recessive like how we have in Mendelian disorders where we talk about uh, uh, autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive or X-linked dominant, X-linked recessive. So Down syndrome is a chromosomal disorder. So in this case, it, there is no concept of dominant or recessive. Similarly, there is no concept of whether the father is impacted or the mother is imp impacted because it has nothing to do with uh, the gender of the person. So how how do we know that if a person, if, a, if the mother is affected with Down syndrome, father is normal, so what is the possibility that the child might also get this disorder? Now let us look at it in this fashion. So let's say this is the mother and this is the father. So here since the father is normal, so let's first talk about the mother. So what would be the mother's contribution to the child? Now, when you look at the mother, the mother has a total of 46 chromosomes, that is 44 plus 2 chromosomes. So, out of these many chromosomes, these 44 chromosomes are the autosomes. Right? Now, when you look at Down syndrome, it is a chromosomal disorder. To be more specific, it has autosomal abnormality. So the abnormality of the Down syndrome is related to the autosome. So it has nothing to do with the sex chromosomes. So now when the mother contributes for the child, like when sexual reproduction takes place, when fertilization takes place, what is mother's contribution to the child? So the mother contributes through the female gamete, that is the egg cell, the mother contributes half of the autosomes. Right. So basically the mother would contribute 22 chromosomes to the child. So how the mother contributes these 22 chromosomes through the haploid female gametes that is through the haploid egg cells. Similarly, the child gets remaining 22 chromosomes from the father or you can say remaining 22 autosomes from the father. The child gets one sex chromosome from mother, one sex chromosome from father and overall the child also gets a 46 chromosome. So that is what the normal process is. Now what happens if the mother is affected with Down syndrome? So, let us, so this was the scenario of a normal mother. Now let us say, let us take the scenario of an affected mother, a mother affected with Down syndrome. So in Down syndrome, how many total chromosomes the mother has? So now the mother has a total of 45 autosomes and two sex chromosomes because this time she has one extra copy of chromosome on number 21. So that means her total count of autosomes will increase by one. So now she has 45. Now this time when she has to contribute half of her chromosomes to the child, how will 45 autosomes divide? So now the 45 autosomes will not divide into 22, 22. Instead, it will divide into 22 and 23. So that is how the division of 45 will happen into two halves. Now the question is, what will the child get? So now if you look at the possibility, if the child gets these 22 chromosomes, then the child will be normal because the child, because the father is normal. So the father is going to give the child 22 autosomes. So if the child is getting 22 autosomes from the mother, the child is going to be normal. But in case the child gets 23 autosomes from the mother, then what is going to happen? The child again will have 23 from mother plus 22 from father. So the child will have 45 autosomes. So basically in that case, the child would get affected. So now if I ask you, can you tell me what is the possibility that the child would be affected? So you say it is like equal possibilities. So there are total two possibilities. One possibility, the child would be normal. 
when it gets 22 autosomes from the mother. Other possibility is the child will be affected when it gets 23 autosomes from the mother. So basically there is a 50% chance that the child might be normal and the 50% chance that the child might get the abnormal number of chromosomes from the mother. So there is a 50% possibility that the child might get affected by this disorder. So you see this is another way of actually looking at how the chromosomal disorders will get passed on to the next generations. So even though we do not have uh, the Mendelian inheritance pattern, but still these concepts of um, inheritance remain the same. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.